Hello everybody and welcome to this part which will, in which we'll look at the timeline of adaptations when you undergo a resistance training program. So what we're dealing with here is somebody who is a novice, okay? So this is for a novice individual who's never performed any uh, resistance training uh, in their life before. Uh, so we've got here the progress, so this is in terms of strength and of course hypertrophy as well. And then we've got the time in weeks going across the bottom. So obviously we're interested in increasing our strength okay um, and how that actually happens is that first we would see an increase or we would see changes in the neural adaptations occurring within the body so an increase in strength okay is due to neural adaptation so this is strength and this are, these are neural adaptations, okay? So this is exactly what's happening with uh, in the body in the first approximately six to eight weeks, okay? So when you embark on a resistance training at the, at the beginning, each week you will see an improvement in strength. You will see an improvement in the weight that, that you can lift, and that's largely down to the neural adaptations, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But then at some point after six to eight weeks, what we actually starting to, what we actually start to get, okay, is hypertrophy, okay? So the red is hypertrophy, muscle hypertrophy. This is an increase in the, the muscle size, um, uh, in the, an increase in the actin and myosin filaments, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a separate video about the adaptations uh, to in, in, that are occurring in muscle hypertrophy. Uh, but this starts to occur just after the eight weeks, so after two months, you start to get an increase in the size of your muscle. Um, I mean, you do get hypertrophy occurring at the beginning as well, but it's not contributing to uh, the strength gains as much as neural adaptations do. Uh, but after six to eight weeks, the neural adaptations just tail off, um, and it's the hypertrophy of the muscle which is contributing to the increased strength gain. Now note, we do have this area here in strength where there is a plateau. Okay, and we'll talk more about ways to overcome that plateau uh, in, a, in a subsequent video. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, the neural adaptations that we're talking about um, here. So what I will actually do is go through some of the neural adaptations one by one. So we can get rid of this um, uh, graph here. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we mean by neural adaptations. So there's a couple of things that, that are happening. The first, the first thing that's actually going to happen is we're going to get an increased firing frequency to the muscle. Okay, so we know that the muscle is receiving uh, electrical stimulus to cause contraction of the, uh, of the muscle fibers. This is also known as rate coding, okay? So let's explain what rate coding or increased firing frequency is. Now, if there was a, if there was a single electrical stimulus going to the motor unit in my muscle, the, mo the muscle would exhibit what is known as a twitch, okay? Now, if there was a second electrical stimulus going at the same time, um, or just shortly afterwards, so that the first electrical stimulus is still causing the twitch, but the second one comes along, then we're going to get a greater uh, contraction, okay? And then if we have a third signal coming through, uh, then we're going to get this cumulative effect, and this is known as summation. So it's basically increasing the firing frequency, the electrical stimulation to the muscle, so that the first electrical stimulation hasn't finished uh, uh, causing the contraction of the muscle, but the next one has come along and the next one has come along and eventually we get to a point where if all of the motor units are, are receiving an electrical stimulus uh, at a similar time, we'll get tetanus, okay? And that, that results in maximum force development, so peak tension, peak force availability. Um, so essentially this is what we're talking about with increased firing frequency, electrical signals coming in summation, in very quick succession, and this equates to increased uh, force uh, and, and, of course, uh, peak tension, okay? So force availability or force application and peak 
tension. So that's one of the things that we, that's one of the adaptations that are occurring in those first six to eight weeks, okay? Now, we're also going to get uh, a reduction in the activity of the Golgi tendon organ, so GTO. Now, I have done a video specifically about the Golgi tendon organ, uh, so it's worth just uh, going through to refresh yourself about what this uh, sensor, muscle sensor, actually does. Uh, but essentially, as we, as we do resistance training, our, not only is our muscle getting stronger, but also the tendons, the other connective tissue that attach the muscle to the bone are also allowing, are also adapting um, to allow the muscle to transmit that force to the bone. So, you know, you get an increase in uh, collagen deposition, uh, elastin fibers, uh, there's uh, the, the extracellular matrix is also enhanced to ensure that the, the greater force from the muscle can be transferred to, to, uh, to the bone. And to allow that greater tension development or tension transference to the bone, from the muscle to the bone, the Golgi tendon organ's activity Normally, it inhibits muscle contraction. So if you have too much force going through the Golgi tendon organ, it sends an inhibitory signal to the muscle and the muscle then relaxes. But as you start to adapt to resistance training and as the tendon adapts to the resistance training, the inhibitory effect of Gol the Golgi tendon organ is lowered. So what we can put here is lowered uh, inhibition of the muscle or of the motor unit, okay? Uh, and this is also uh, another change that we would actually expect to see with, uh, with the Golgi tendon organ um, uh, uh, occurring here. Now, we'll also, what will also happen is a reduction in the coactivation of muscles. So we know that for uh, uh, a pairs of muscles, so the biceps and triceps, one is gonna be an agonist. So for example, flexion of the elbow, the, the, the bicep is the, an, uh, the agonist, the antagonistic, antagonistic muscle would be the tricep which allows the lengthening of, uh, of, the, of the arm. Uh, now generally the premise of uh, reduction in coactivation is that wh whenever you have antagonistic muscles uh, uh, working at the same time as an agonist muscle then you get some degree of resistance to that movement. So the idea with a reduction in coactivation is actually to have uh, less antagonistic activity which allows you to produce more force uh, when you're pro producing an agonistic uh, movement. Okay, so these are some of the main uh, adaptations that we would actually have from uh, uh, the neural adaptations that we would have from doing uh, resistance training and they are all occurring uh, in the first six to eight weeks. Uh, all of them are, are extremely important in terms of uh, uh, ensuring that we have that greater neuromuscular control of the muscle and then obviously as the training progresses we'll be moving on to uh, uh, hypertrophy which contributes mainly to, to the, the changes that are occurring. Okay, so hopefully you've got some appreciation there of the early stages of um, uh, resistance training adaptations that occur in, in a novice person uh, and in subsequent videos we will talk about the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy so the biology of what's actually happening in the muscle so please do stay tuned for those and I hope to see you again soon.